Hello and welcome. In this video, we would like to show you that you can learn our PNID software, M4 PNID FX, within 5 minutes. So, in the next 5 minutes, I will introduce you to the main features of M4 PNID FX and show you how quickly you can actually get your first PNID drawing. So, let's get started. First of all, we have the dashboard in which you can see all the context-sensitive data for the current element, that you have selected. Here you can change the properties of each selected element. At the top, we have a ribbon menu, where you can find the basic P and ID functions you need to create a P and ID drawing. Then we have a home ribbon, where you can find all the available 2D CAD functions. In the file menu, you can create new drawings, for example an A3 sheet. Here you can also change the title and the drawing number. To create your first drawing, open the equipment library. This will open a symbol library for you, in which you can then select the symbol that you want to place. You can also select the subcategories here, such as for tanks and vessels. Simply take a tank and place it in your drawing. Once it's placed, you can select it at any time and change the attributes so that they can be used later in your parts list. Next, we'll place a couple of fluid pumps. To do this, we simply take the fluid pumps area, and pick out a pump. We can then rotate it, or flip it vertically, and just place it here twice. Let's place another one. You can see, that names are assigned automatically. We can adjust these afterwards, by accessing the ID here, and inserting reactor as the name. Next, we create some pipes. For this, we simply take in a main pipe and connect it to a symbol. The direction, in which we draw the line, also defines the flow direction. We can also change this at any time, by double clicking on a line and changing the flow direction here. Next, I place more pipelines, which I can then connect here. As soon as I have connected them to a line, the connection point is set here, and the two lines are connected. Now I can also place the line labels. I can define these here and select a different specification, for example. Or I can set the size to 50. Now I can place the line labels on the pipelines. The line labels are also automatically named and numbered for me. In the same way, I can also display the flow direction by adding flow direction arrows to the individual lines. If I now want to place a valve, I simply use the catalog for inline equipment. To do this, I then switch to the relevant catalog. Here I can choose a suitable valve and then place it on my pipeline. These are also automatically named, and the attributes can also be changed here in the dashboard. If I want to change the position of a symbol, I can also move it at any time. For the placement of the instrumentation we need the instrumentation catalog. But for this, I also need an instrumentation line, which I can select here and then connect either to a line or to a symbol. I now connect it to the line, then select an instrumentation symbol, such as this one, and place it here. Before I do that, I can change the ID, like 001. Then specify the function, and place it here. If I want to move single symbols or complete symbol groups, then I should select them and use the move function. I can then reposition them. The lines are then automatically adjusted and straightened. I can do this for other symbols too. Now we come to the last special feature, which allows me to completely review my drawing and create a parts list. Here the software shows me some warnings, that I have not used some connection points. I can also simply delete some of these points, if I don't need them. Then I can check my P and ID again. The warnings are no longer displayed here, which means that my drawing has now a higher quality. In this dialog I can also create a detailed parts list. 
Here I can, for example, select a list, like a complete equipment list. Now I can display the parts list as a dialog, or load it as a table into the drawing. I can also output it as a file. In this case, all possible file types are available. As an example, I will first use the dialog and output the parts list here. As you can see, I get the complete parts list according to the configuration, I selected here. This brings us to the end of the 5 minutes, in which you have learned how to create a P and ID drawing quickly and easily with the M4P and IDFX software. We have shown you the most important functions here, however, there are quite a few other features, that you will need to create a more detailed P and ID drawing. For that I would simply ask you to look at our website under M4P and IDFX, and then under the video tutorials section. There are detailed video tutorials, that will show you every feature of the software in detail, and even show you how to configure the software for your own needs. Thank you, and see you next time.